All right, guys. Good Lord. It is finally a glorious summer night here. The last week of spring here at Bugs in a Jar Farm and the frogs are having a fine time down in the pond making tadpoles and I'm hanging out with the blue dragon. I don't know where I, the little dog has gotten off to. But anyway, I've been meaning to do this a chronicle of the collapse for several days and I keep getting distracted and I guess tomorrow is going to be the Manga Bay Roundup. So I'm going to get, we're going to talk about, oops, I'm going to talk about Blue Meanies. Blue Meanies. Yes. Come on, Blue Meanie. Good God Almighty. I guess this is my new, uh, since I no longer have a little dog. Do you know anything about the disappearance of the little dog or not? All right, we're going to talk about nuclear war. And we don't talk enough about nuclear war here at Collapse Chronicles. So today's Chronicle of the Collapse for June 15, 2023. <coughs> we're going to check in, which is quite, quite likely to be the the way we all go down before climate change ever uh, makes a toehold into the destruction of the planet. But we're going to check in with the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute. I guess they're searching or they're researching for peace. Yes. Are you searching or researching for peace. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read the introduction to this, and then I'm going to jump ahead and read the conclusions to it, and then we're going to come back and do the stuff in the middle, because I know that all my ADD listeners don't stick around till the end, and the conclusions are what's most important. So, uh, what does the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute have to say about the state of the planet in the middle of 2023. States, you know, when they use this word states, when they mean countries, it always confuses us uh, Yankees here and the states. So normally, if you're not from the United States and you see the word states, what it means is countries. Anyway, countries invest in nuclear arsenals as geopolitical relations deteriorate. So the new Stockholm International Peace Research Institute yearbook 2023 is out now. All right, and I don't know if this is something you can buy or not. Uh, okay, read this. Uh, click here to download a champ a, a sample chapter and then I guess you can figure out how to order the whole book but we're just going to give you the uh, synopsis of the book alright <clears throat> nuclear arsenals are being fortified around the world yes they are I uh Need to keep checking this camera. Okay, it looks like it's still on. <clears throat> the nine nuclear armed states the United States, Russia, the United Kingdom, France, China, India, Pakistan, North Korea, and Israel, although I think there's ten, didn't uh didn't Vladimir Putin, isn't he giving away nuclear weapons now to his buddies, to his dictator buddies? I think that dictator over there in, uh, over there, maybe Belarus is now a nuclear uh, power thanks to Vladimir. Vladimir Putin has so many extra nukes lying around that he's just handing them out to other countries. Kind of like, uh, I guess, did we hand the ones to, 
Israel or not. Can't remember. Now, I don't see Iran on this list yet. Hmm, don't know about that one. Anyway, the nine official nuclear armed states continue to modernize their nuclear arsenals and several deployed new nuclear armed or nuclear capable we weapon systems last year in 2022. All right. Of the total global inventory of an estimated 12,512 warheads in January of this year, about 9,576 9, were in military stockpiles ready for potential use, which is 86 more than there were in January of last year. Of those, an estimated 3,000 844 warheads were deployed with missiles and aircraft, and around 2,000, nearly all of which belonged to Russia or the U.S., were kept in a state of high operational alert, meaning that they were fitted to missiles or held at air bases hosting nuclear bombs. So we're going to come back and break this all down. Um, but we're going uh, to uh, jump to the bottom and then we're going to get back to the middle. So rounding this up at the bottom, global security and stability are in increasing peril. The 54th edition of the yearbook reveals the continuing deterioration of global security over the past year. The impacts of the war in Ukraine are visible in almost every aspect of the issues connected to armaments, disarmament, and international security examined in the yearbook. Nevertheless, it was far from being the only major conflict being waged in 2022, and acute geopolitical tensions, mistrust, and division had been growing long before Russia's full-scale invasion of its neighbor. We are drifting into one of the most dangerous periods in human history, says Dan Smith, CIPRI's director. It is imperative that the world's governments find ways to cooperate, huh, in order to calm political tensions, slow arms races, and deal with the worsening consequences of environmental breakdown and rising world hunger, close quote, in addition to the usual detailed coverage of nuclear arms control, disarmament, and non-proliferation issues, the yearbook presents data and analysis on developments in world military expenditure international arms transfers, arms production, unilateral peace operations, armed conflicts, and more. Uh, special sections of the 2023 yearbook explore the rise of private military and security companies such as the Wagner Group and the related impact on peace and security how the war in Ukraine has affected governance of space and cyberspace, the attacks on nuclear power plants during the fighting in Ukraine and their implications, and the regulation of new technologies such as autonomous weapons system, meaning, you know, weapons that don't need 
Uh, humans. Okay, so what is the breakdown? I guess this is actually the numbers uh, at the opening of the year, so these numbers have no doubt gone up. All right, it will not surprise anybody that Russia and the USA together possess almost 90% of all nuclear weapons. The sizes of their respective nuclear arsenals, meaning usable warheads, seems to have remained relatively stable in 2022, although transparency regarding nuclear forces declined in both countries in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. In addition to their usable nuclear weapons, Russia and the USA each held more than 1,000 warheads previously retired, yes, right, from military service, which they are gradually dismantling. Uh-huh, I really believe that one. Cipri's estimate of the size of China's nuclear arsenal increased from 350 warheads in January 2022 to 410 in January 2023. So 60 of the 86 new ones are from China, and its arsenal is expected to keep growing depending on how it decides to structure its forces China could potentially have at least as many intercontinental ballistic missiles as either the USA or Russia by the end of this decade. Uh, this is Han Christensen, Associate Senior Fellow with Cipri's Weapons of Mass Destruction Program Quote, China has started a significant expansion of its nuclear arsenal. It is increasingly difficult to square this trend with China's declared aim of having only the minimum nuclear forces needed to maintain its national security. Close quote. Although the UK is thought to have increased its nuclear weapon arsenal in 2022, the warhead stockpile is expected to grow in the future as a result of the British government's announcement in 2021 that it was raising its limit from 225 to 260 warheads. The British government also said it would no longer publicly disclose its quantities of nuclear weapons, deployed warheads, or deployed missiles. In 2022, France continued its program to develop a third-generation nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarine and a new air-launched cruise missile as well as to refurbish and upgrading existing systems. So now let's look at, uh, start getting into the more likely place where we're going to see some, uh, some action. India and Pakistan both appear to be expanding their nuclear arsenals, and both countries introduced and continued to develop new types of nuclear delivery systems in 2022. While Pakistan remains the main focus of India's nuclear deterrent, India appears to be placing growing emphasis on longer-range weapons, including the capa those capable of reaching targets 
across China. There you go. Let's don't forget Rocket Man. North Korea continues to prioritize its military nuclear program as a central element of its national security strategy. While North Korea conducted no nuclear test explosions in 2022, it conducted more than 90 tests of missiles. Some of these missiles, which include new ICBMs, may be capable of carrying nuclear warheads. CIPRI estimates that the country has now assembled around 30 warheads and possesses enough fissile material for a total of 50 to 70 warheads. Uh, both significant increases over the estimates for January of 2022, and at least when this article was written a week ago before Putin started handing out uh, nuclear weapons to his buddies, Israel, which does not publicly acknowledge possessing nuclear weapons, is also believed to be modernizing its nuclear arsenal. This is Matt Corda, Associate Researcher with CIPRI's Weapons of Mass Destruction program. Quote, most of the nuclear-armed states are hardening their rhetoric about the importance of their nuclear weapons, and some are even issuing explicit or implicit threats about potentially using them. This elevated nuclear competition has dramatically increased the risk that nuclear weapons might be used in anger. Yes, nuclear weapons might be used in anger for the first time since World War II. Close quote. Why else would you use a nuclear weapon? I mean, you have to be pretty pissed off you know, to bring out the nuclear weapons. I, I don't think you you blow off a nuclear weapon for a gender reveal party, okay? Uh, this is... Uh, the, the same dude. No, this is Wilfred Wan, director of CIPRI's Weapons of Mass Destructive program, quote, with billion-dollar programs to modernize and, in some cases, expand nuclear arsenals. The five nuclear weapon states recognized by the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty seem to be moving further and further from their commitment to disarmament. Do you think so? And then, of course, the uh, big, the main news of the past year, nuclear diplomacy has been dealt a further blow by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Do you think so? Nuclear arms control and disarmament diplomacy suffered major setbacks following Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February of 2022. In the wake of the invasion, the USA suspended its bilateral strategic stability dialogue with Russia. In February of this year, Russia announced it was suspending its participation and the 2010 Treaty in Measures for the Further Reduction and Limitation of Strategic Offensives Arms, known as the New START Treaty, the last remaining nuclear arms control treaty limiting Russian and U.S. strategic nuclear forces. Talks about a follow-on treaty to New START which expires in 2026, were also suspended. 
nevertheless, by CIPRI's assessment, both countries deployed strategic nuclear forces remained within the start limits as of January 2023. Okay, here's Iran finally showing up. Iran's military support to Russia, to Russian forces in Ukraine and the political situation in Iran has also overshadowed shadowed talks on reviving the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, the 2015 agreement meant to prevent Iran from developing nuclear weapons. Uh, the revival of that uh, now seems increasingly unlikely. Is there anybody on the planet thinking that Iran is not going to soon be a nuclear power, if it's not already. This is Dan Smith, CIPRI director again. Quote, In this period of high geopolitical tension and mistrust with communication channels between nuclear-armed rivals closed or barely functioning, the risks of miscalculation, misunderstanding, or accident are unacceptably high. There is an urgent need to restore nuclear diplomacy and strengthen international controls on nuclear arms. And as he says, quote, we are drifting into one of the most dangerous periods in human history. There you go. So, uh, what does our little uh, friend from the Permian extinction have to say about all this? Are we going to get a taste of our own medicine, do you think? Are we the asteroid? Yes. Listen to the asteroid. You thought you ruled the world. You thought that you were the king of the hill. All it took was one asteroid. And look at you now. You're a little stuffed toy. Uh, get out there and enjoy your extinction while you still can. Bye, guys. Is this thing even still on? It is still on. Just the frogs. I hear spring peepers. Of course, we hear the American toad, and we hear the green frog. The tree frogs actually sing during the day, I was noticing. So that's four frogs. The leopard frogs, I see a bunch of them, but I'm not hearing the leopard frogs. So that's five kinds of frogs we have. We have no bullfrogs. Bye, guys.